Hello and welcome to the first Creative TD training video on shading inside of Unity. Uh, in this particular video I'm going to start off the uh, shading tutorial series by showing you how to create one of the simplest shaders possible. Um, this is mainly for people who are new to shading inside of Unity using, using the uh, new surface shader model that Unity has incorporated. Um, it just will help you get used to writing shaders inside of Unity. So, without further ado, let's get started. To, to get this all going, I'm going to make a sphere first. So I'm just going to go to Game Object, Create Other Sphere. Now let's zoom in on that. And i just like to zero out all my objects first. And then I don't need the uh, sphere collider on there. I just like to kind of keep my scene clean. All right. I'm going to get rid of the grid by turning on the uh, environment uh, viewing properties inside of the, the scene view here. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material. So let's just do this. I'm going to call this uh, Diffuse Simple. And then inside of Shaders, I want to create a new shader with that same name. So I'm going to call it Diffuse Simple. All right, so that basically gives us a shader and a material to start working with. So now what I want to do before I actually assign the shader to the material itself, what I want to do is start to write um, our simple diffuse shader. So I'm going to just double click on my new shader file here, and this will launch Mono Develop. And what you'll get is a basic shader that allows you to add a texture and it has simple diffuse lighting. Well, this is great. And all, but I want to run through exactly how to do all of those steps. So I'm just going to get rid of all that, and I want to I want to step through each um, level of the shader and just show you and describe to you what's happening, just for people who aren't used to writing well, shaders at all. So let's just start out the shader by writing simply shader, all right? And then we want to give it a name and a, a path, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down CTD for Creative TD, and I'm going to put down Diffuse Simple as the name of the shader. And then you want to enclose that with brackets. So we'll just do that. So our shader basically is going to exist inside of this block of code here, right? And the reason why we had this name right here is because we actually want to put it into the list of shaders that are available when you create a new material. Right, and what we're saying here is that I want to categorize all of the shaders I write for these videos underneath a uh, menu drop-down called CTD, right? So if I go into, so let me save this first. I'll save this, and I go back into Maya, right? I mean, not Maya, inside of Unity. And I go to Diffuse Simple, and I go to the drop-down here. You'll notice that I can actually access a shader inside of CTD Diffuse Simple. So that is that structure right there. And that's how you organize your shaders. Just helps, you know, from an organizational standpoint. Okay, so the next step that any shader goes through, any shader inside of Unity will go through, um, is that you need to declare a subshader. Right? And this basically gets the shader going and it says, hey, I'm going to start to light and render this object. Inside of this block of code, in between these two brackets here, I'm going to put a whole bunch of code, or not a whole bunch of code in this case, but you can put a whole bunch of code into this block right here to determine the final look of your material. Hopefully that makes sense. It'll, it'll make sense more and more we get into this, right? So the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to uh, declare a type of rendering, right? You always have, you can, you can kind of break things down uh, inside of sh uh, real-time shading into transparent and opaque or alpha blended, those kinds of things, right? So for this example, I'm not going to go into all those details. For this example, I'm going to just start to declare my rendering type by writing out tags and then creating two brackets, uh, opening and closing brackets. And I want to declare two strings. The first string is going to be render type, right? So we're telling Unity we want to render this as a certain type, right? And then 
you have a whole bunch of types that you can actually give the render type. Uh, and in this case, we're going to do opaque. All right, and that's basically you're just going to say this thing's not going to be transparent. We're not going to do any sort of fancy effects with it. It's just solid. It's just a solid material. All right, and so that's what that means. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is now we want to start to utilize the surface shading model. And to do that, we're going to use uh, CG, which is a uh, shader language, right? There's HLSL and CG, and there's also OpenGL. But in this case, um, I've learned how to do CG for Unity so, uh, and for Maya and so on. But, and so that's the language I'm going to use. All right, so to start that, we're going to declare that this is a CG program. And what you want to do is just put that all in caps. And you'll notice that it turns green, and that just means it's valid. It's always helpful. And what you need to do for a CG program is you, you basically tell the graphics card, the GPU, that, hey, this is going to be a CG program right here. This kind of gets the CG program going. But it also, the graphics card or the GPU needs to know when this program is over. So you actually have to follow this up by saying end CG. All right, so inside of this portion right here is where we'll put our CG code. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm going to do is declare a pragma, uh, a surface type. So this is just basically telling the uh, Unity that we're going to use be using a surface type in our shader. So to do this, what we do is we do a pound sign, and we type out pragma. We want to say it's a surface, and then we want to choose the type of surface that we want to use. Now, by default, Unity comes with Lambert and a Blinfong lighting model which covers a good portion of, of shaders that you will probably be making for your games. But um, there are obviously more tricks and uh, just different techniques you can use to get different types of effects um, for rendering, uh, apart from Lambert and Blend Fong. So we will be going into that in the later portions of this training series. All right, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to just utilize one of the built-in lighting functions inside of um, Unity. So it's going to be a surf of type Lambert. Just type that out right. There you go. All right, and that's all you have to do. Now we are using the Lambert surface. OK. So now what we need to do is declare struct. All right, so struct basically, if you're not familiar, is a way to bundle up a bunch of data. All right, it's like kind of like a mini class. if done any sort of like object oriented programming it just allows you to say that when I declare a new object of type input here in this case or whatever name you want to use um, I want to use all these different type data types <clears throat> it might be a little fuzzy at first but um, shaders rely heavily on these struct types to bundle up data so that you can access them inside of the vertex and pixel shaders that you write Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it'll become more evident over the course of um, this training series. So in this case, since this is just a simple um, shader, all I need to do is just declare a single color. So I just want to make a float 4. right? And the reason why it's a float 4 is because we need to include the alpha. So it's RGB and A. right? So we have RGB and then alpha. All right, And we're going to give it a name of color. And then its type is going to be color. And you have to end that with a semicolon. And always make sure to end your structs with a semicolon too. That just tells the program that this is a struct and it's just bundling up all these, these variable names, these data types, into a class of type input, basically. So it's an object. All right. So in the next step, we actually want to light our model. And to do that, you just declare void surf, right? So that's the name of our lighting model here, void surf. And then in here, we want to say uh, input. Oops. We want to create a new input object. So basically, we want to give it input in, not I'm. All right. And then we want to bring in the Lambert lighting model to use. So we want to do uh, in out. Let me say surface. Oops. Surface output. And if I could remember how to type, it would work. And then we want to, so basically we want to 
feed in all the um, data types that are in this struct, right? And then and this comes in handy when you start dealing with like vertex shaders and stuff like that, um, because you'll declare a lot of your UVs and vertex information inside of a struct um, and allows you to access them inside of the the surface shader itself. And then we want to output or we want to set um, the values of our surface shader, which is now being held in this identifier, this O right here. And we want to set its properties or its structure values as well. All right, so we have two ways of using information. We have our struct input, which is bringing in uh, vertex data and other types that we declare, or UVs, or it'll bring in uh, textures, stuff like that, right? And then we want to also set values that are inside of our lighting model of Surf Lambert right here. Okay, so then all we need to do is we, we want to set the diffuse, basically, of or the diffuse color of our shader. So basically all we need to do is set the albedo of our surface shader. So I'm going to say o.albedo. And it's going to equal in dot color, right? Which is, should most likely be white, right? Because all of our vertices most likely have a value of one on them in terms of vertex color. And this hasn't even been set either. So even if it was just a random color, it's probably set to one because we haven't set it anywhere. All right, so right there, you now have a shader. As good practice, it's always nice to put some sort of fallback, and I always um, fall back to using diffuse. Just like that. So this means that if this CG program cannot run, or this subshader basically can't run, it's just going to use the default uh, built-in shader value of diffuse, and that's the stuff that comes with Unity. Uh, that is the default diffuse material or shader. All right. So you can save that and let's switch back to Unity. All right, it's going to compile. And if you didn't get any errors, then you should be good. All right, so now in our diffuse simple material here, what I need to do is hit the drop down, go to CTD and diffuse simple. And you notice nothing really changed, and that's just because um, I already had a simple diffuse on here. But that is your shader that you just wrote. It's the most basic shader. You notice we don't have any properties or any way to change the color itself. And so in the next video, we're going to go over how to declare a property and put a texture on this. And a lot of these concepts are going to start to really gel together. So I hope that helped uh, get you into writing sh surface shaders for Unity. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you, you can always email me, which is kennyl at creativetd.com, or you can just email the company at info at creativetd.com. Thank you very much.